Hey, welcome to another episode of 3-Minute Marketing, uh, where we do micro-interviews to package up value bombs for all you uh, marketing executives out there. Uh, I'm your host, Arsha Mirsha. I'm uh, co-founder of Web Mechanics Performance uh, Advertising Agency, and I am honored uh, to have a badass uh, a growth expert, Sheraton Orr. Say hi, Sheraton. Hi. Thank Thanks you for, for joining me today. Yeah, absolutely. Our pleasure. Uh, Sheraton is the CMO of Built In. It's uh, Built In is a go-to hub for tech professionals who want to learn about the technology industry, build connections, and ultimately carve out a future and get a job at these companies that uh, they they believe in. Uh, Built In is really cool. They they lead with content to actually help tech professionals uh, learn about the industry and and what have you before you know going and offering a job, so to speak, right? And Sheraton is, uh, you know, uh, definitely a badass in the space. You, you know, done product marketing and and uh, and uh, and channel marketing for the likes of Red Hat, Channel Advisor, People Fluent. Uh, you know, so really excited to have you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I'm excited. I yeah. always like to talk to my marketing uh, people. <laughs> here we here we are. So so yeah, and you know you've. Uh, You've been at these different companies, some kind of startup, some enterprise. So I'm really curious. The the one question I have for you is around uh, kind of the phases of maturity in building a marketing team. So you know, you maybe maybe you're uh, the head of marketing at a, a startup or a small company that's growing fast, or maybe you're new to a Fortune 1000. You know, what do you look for as a, a, in a building a marketing team? Well, I always think about it as like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And you have to start like with eating and breathing and that's feeding sales, right? If you don't feed sales, not just with, you know, leads, but with, you know, the story and the collateral and who they should be targeting and where our solution fits and, you know, the parameters of what we can sell today versus what we can sell tomorrow and how to tell that story, you're really going to fail. Because when you think about investors and you know C-suite executives, that are, those are the metrics that they really understand about marketing is you know how many sales did we make, how much did marketing contribute to that, and so I think you have to start there. And you know I'm a brand product person, and so it almost pains me to say that, but that really is the bread and butter in which marketing is made on. And once you have those salespeople as, you know, champions, you can really start to do a lot more. And I would also say not only sales, but you have to keep an eye on the customer experience. That's where I would start is what can we sell today? How do we sell it? How do we package it? And then how do we support it? And how do we create an excellent customer experience? Because as a marketer, you know, it's so much easier to keep those customers and help them be referrals and case studies and all of that stuff that kind of becomes the flywheel for you at the beginning. Love that. I would keep my eye on the customer experience from day one and be a huge advocate for that. So once you kind of have like your sales funnel, you know, moving, you can say, okay, marketing is contributing this much. Then you can start to get more budget. You have faith in the organization. You also through that, you know, experience of making sure the sales team has what they need to sell. You understand your market more, your customers more, and probably space more. And this is going to be a controversial thing is I think product marketing goes before brand. And I'll tell you why, because if you don't really understand your product market fit, your ideal customer, you're going to like waste a lot of time branding to the wrong people. So that, you know, ideal customer is going to be critical to make sure that you're spending your brand money and time wisely. So I would really focus on, you know, understanding your market space. And then the other thing I would say in product marketing is segment, segment by not, you know, a lot of us like to say, oh, it's SMB growth and enterprise, but is there a vertical space? Because especially when you're joining a company that may have a huge total addressable market, it is so much easier to win 
in a very defined space. Your messaging is tighter. Your audience is, you know where to find your audience. You can be much more effective. Like for instance, built in is excellent with FinTech companies. Like we really do a good job with FinTech companies. And so we do vertical campaigns, vertical messaging to make sure that we can continue to win there. And that all really is on the back of product marketing. So now you get to have the fun stuff, right? We're going to self-actualize and move into branding. Right. And that's what we all love. Now, that doesn't mean you have neglected the brand through the sales products, and now you're in the branding phase. You probably have just been refining it. Like, and, and I mean, you know, you've gotten your you know, color palette and your logo and all of those things. But now you're really going to be like, okay, we're going to evoke a feeling and we're going to own our space. And we are going to differentiate ourselves from the competitors. And you really need product marketing to understand really that unique space in the Venn diagram that you can own in the branding world. And so um, as you continue to mature, so you move from, you know, sales, product, brand, you, you start layering on things like analyst relations and PR and all of those things. You know, certainly you're going to do press releases about new products and new customers, but you're not going to invest, you know, your $200,000 with an agency until you really get those foundational pieces. You have customers who are advocates because that's what PR wants. So that's kind of my three minute phase, you know, how to build a marketing team in three minutes. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. So what I heard was, you know, start with the low hanging fruit, uh, make sure you're breathing and eating. Right. So that, and what that means is uh, you're driving leads that actually turn into sales. You know, then you can use those sales, those customers to learn what your actual product market fit looks like where, you know, you can carve out some niches. So that's the product market fit. We're moving up in the hierarchy and then we get to, at that point, then we get the brand. And, and by doing so, one thing you said in the, in the uh, pre-interview here, you said you get a budget by doing that, right? If you come into the marketing Oregon and you start driving leads and driving sales, you get more budget. You can use that budget then to refine your brand and, and really target in uh, to do the kind of long-term, uh, high-value, long-term activities in branding. Yeah. And I think the other thing, brand is always about story, right? Like if you don't have the story because you haven't stayed close to the customer, close to the product, co close to the you know landscape in which you're playing, you don't really know which brand stories to tell. Like you can have a whiteboard session, but you don't know how to prove them. And that is one thing that I'm always asking my team, like, what is the proof point? We're saying something. How do we prove it? Because that's how you move somebody kind of through the funnel is we're going to say something and evoke this feeling from you with our brand. But, you know, we're going to follow fast follow with here's a customer story that really exemplifies what we're telling you. Love it. Yeah. With, you know, so uh, actions lead uh, speak louder than words, right? You're going to say the words, but then you're going to show the action. So as it pertains to three minute marketing, that's the value bomb right there. You start with the, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You start with the, you know, feeding sales, the collateral, the leads, the sales, uh, then you go to product market fit and then to the brand. So that's good for three minutes. Sheraton and I were, uh, thank you so much, Sheraton. I love it. Love the analogy, the uh, parallel to Maslow's hierarchy of needs and let's keep chatting. But for everyone, uh, at listening. Thank you for your time. Like, subscribe, share this if you found it valuable. Go follow uh, Sheraton. Go check out Built, on, Built In as too. I think a lot of people listening are, are kind of at the intersection of marketing and tech. Let me ask you about, um, so I, I had so many thoughts like while you were talking, but I, I, uh, it's hard. I should have been like writing them down, right? Um, what do you, let me ask about like insourcing versus outsourcing. Is there, I mean, I know you've been in a lot of different companies, but is there is there any kind of rule of thumb there, you know? I, for me, it's always get the best that you possibly can get. And if you have a rock star on your team who can, you know, do it, then you should keep it in source. But like sometimes I prefer an agency because I get to learn from what they're seeing and other clients doing. So it, it actually is somebody who can help shape your strategy. 
So, you know, especially like digital advertising, branding, I want to know what best in class are doing because right. we don't always know inside um, the organization. Are there new channels to explore? You know, Reddit is a new channel to advertise on. Yeah. How, do, how are we successful there? Yeah, so Quora as well. Yeah. That's another one. Sorry, I, I can't help myself. Quora on Reddit. You're right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's funny because, or GitHub, you know, sure. like are those new channels and how, who's being successful? How do we do that? And, you know, my son is a big FIFA player. And mm -hmm. so he's always trading his players. And I'm like, you always have to have the best team that you can put on the yeah. field. And that doesn't always have to be internal. And, you know, as you continue to grow and think about like where your skill gaps are, one of the things that I always try to do at least twice a year is I have this spreadsheet <laughs> that I keep and it's my own private spreadsheet and I call it team white space. And I take and I write down all the skill sets that you need to be a thriving marketing organization. Mm. You know, is that, you know, ad buying? Is that market sizing? Is that, you know, what are Content those production, whatever? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and I rate the team like who's doing that today? So smart. Who is doing it today? And is that the best that we can do? And then I also write like, how important is this to us in our strategy right now? Like market sizing is really important to us right now. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much two quarters ago. Mm -hmm. And so now my need for that has gone up, but do I have an absolute world-class A player in that? And right. that's when I know I need to either hire or look for somebody else to help me with that. And then I also look on the time horizon. Is this something I'm going to need in perpetuity or is this something I need today? Smart. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Because if you need in perpetuity, then you're, you're more likely to hire. If you need it just today, then you might go find a vendor, partner, contractor type. Yeah, but that's my super secret CMO thing is do a talent white space report. And I like with yourself. Be what with yourself? Say? Be really honest with be yourself. Be really honest, yeah. Because when you do that, you actually are taking the personalities out of it. And you're saying, you know what? Do I have a best-in-class events person? I absolutely do. Do I have a best-in-class content person? Yes, I do. Do I have a best-in-class, you know... Market analysis company? or an yeah. uh, uh, analyst. An analyst. Or... I don't have that. So where do I find it? Yeah. No, that's really smart. Uh, so many parallels to stuff that I'm uh, doing at, at Web Mechanics as well. Like we're doing, instead of an org chart, we're doing what does our accountability chart look like for our org, uh, you know, 12, 12 uh, months out, six to 12 months out. And then we also do something kind of similar to what you're talking about. Uh, we call it our unicorn chart. And it's it's similar to your team white space in that we, we basically write out all of our skill sets uh, all of our capabilities and skill sets and then our people and we kind of rank, you know, one to 10 and then we can take the aggregate of that and put it on like one of these, um, uh, not dot plot. It's like a, it's a circle and the skills are around it. And it's like, how much do you have in those? And, and then, and then you start thinking, well, where do I want to expand? Okay. My creative is a seven, but I think creative is the future. So I need that to be a 10. Okay. What do I, you know, what do I need to do? And it's a good visual and, and a good, great exercise. I well, love that too. Is it like the spider chart? Those are yeah, the spider favorite. chart. Yeah. Yeah, spider charts are my fave. Nice, nice. Of all the charts out there, right? There's so many yeah, charts. Yeah. I love the Venn diagram's pretty sweet too. So <laughs> I do like the Venn diagram, the the intersection of right. Find the overlap yeah. and right. Yeah, no, this is good. That's 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 almost uh, the the whole team white spacing thing. <laughs> Maybe a better piece of content for the three minute. Uh, I piece, feel like but come back anytime i'm down let's have it let's do it so that was good uh so that's two value bombs in in one episode um that's awesome that's a record we'll keep that and thank you sheraton i really appreciate that i'm gonna stop the podcast now thanks for everyone for listening sheraton anything you want to say to anyone oh, listening thanks and thanks for having me and uh feel free to linkedin connect with me because i absolutely love learning from other marketers so i'm not the white space gap on my team so share your bums with me love it will do sheraton or uh or is o-r-r -R. uh she's on linkedin she's active go find her and connect thanks All for right. everyone for tuning in